Okay, let's look a little bit more uh, at the other beautiful technology that's going to uh, keep growing, uh, hopefully, and it's called fuel cell technology, as opposed to combustion, uh, where we are having all these inefficiencies along with pollution and greenhouse gases. Uh, fuel cells uh, minimize it and produce mostly uh, water as a exhaust uh, and they as opposed to batteries they directly take fuel like hydrogen and produce energy there is no intermediate combustion se uh, step no combustion this is the goal right so this is an alternative to combustion that can operate more efficiently than combustion moving parts uh, are all uh, gone so reduces uh, the amount of CO2 emission per megawatt hour in addition to the criteria pollutants and it can be driven with a zero carbon uh, fuel so emitting no CO2 like hydrogen which itself has to be produced in a zero carbon way so we'll keep shifting the place where emission happens as we will see without the emission of criteria pollutants uh, uh, would be uh, preferred. So you would want fuel cell technology that doesn't produce criteria pollutants. Okay, so as you produce a fuel for a fuel cell technology then you have to make sure the production of the fuel itself is also carbon neutral or uh, zero carbon. Okay, um, carbon neutral can mean uh, you emit carbon but you take it out with a carbon capture and sequestration and hide it whereas carbon zero carbon can mean no carbon emission at all okay so there was our combustion where combustion chemistry was producing limited efficiency and uh, lots of pollutant emission including greenhouse gases whereas fuel cell would go through the fuel and air and run through an electrochemistry instead of combustion chemistry and to produce electricity uh, so it would have high efficiency no pollutant emission and uh, acoustically benign so actually they make much 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 less noise than uh, combustion uh, engines uh, even a lawnmower running here can make it impossible for me to sit on the balcony for example let alone uh, record lectures so that means you can put them uh, very close to residential neighborhoods or uh, in the basement without making much noise in fact diesel generators make enormous noise as well as produce carbon monoxide which have caused serious problems carbon monoxide poisoning and even have killed people because in the winter they close all the windows turn on the heater which is run on diesel and go to sleep and the whole house can get inundated with carbon monoxide which is uh, odorless and now they have put things in it to make uh, them smell or you have carbon monoxide detectors you can install along with the fire alarm and so on okay um, so here we are looking at the electrolyte and the anode and the cathode again. Here we have hydrogen splitting into an electron and a proton. The proton can go through the uh, electrolyte and reach the cathode. So the electron flow again has to find a way through the load, which in this case is a light bulb. Pung. And it has some energy still as it reaches the cathode where it mixes with the air uh, just regular air with oxygen and nitrogen and produces water and nitrogen as uh, exhaust how amazing is that so this is called proton exchange membrane fuel cell operates at 90 degrees and can be turned on just like a car which makes it very useful for operating general regular things like uh, uh, the construction equipment or hospitals or space modules and so on and so forth okay amazing right um, the other uh, ways of doing these operating at different temperatures here uh, we looked at the proton exchange membrane there is the phosphoric acid fuel cell uh, PAFC working here uh, again H plus but it's just what is the source of H plus so the reactions remain similar here but it operates at 200 
degrees centigrade so not easy to turn on and off uh, like in the case of the proton exchange membrane here is the producer Ballard Duson fuel cell technology fuel cell energy bloom energy and so on so that's phosphoric acid the molten carbonate uh, fuel cell MCFC operated uh, operates at 650 degrees centigrade and it uses actually uh, a, a bicarbonate or some form of carbonate that's why it's called molten carbonate and it requires uh, H2 and H2O as well so you have anything you do for renewable energy of any form you have to worry about uh, grains and water being used because if you start competing with other uses of food grains and water then you have to make sure that the competition is not harmful for example for water accessibility quality and quantity for socio-economic groups as well as uh, food prices so that's something always to keep in mind okay so it does produce some CO2 here uh, which can be used for uh, either capture and sequester or drive other uses uh, we will see that these can be combined with uh, so-called tri-generation or uh, combined heat and power or combined cooling heat and power okay the uh, solid oxide fuel cell operates at a thousand degrees uses oxygen from the air and produces water as an exhaust okay so good to know that these technologies exist and the wattage uh, rate of those things are different as well okay uh, from a kilowatt uh, that's a requirement for regular residential uh, buildings versus uh, order megawatt for uh, hotels uh, and higher of course for industries and hospitals or other specialty commercial operations